What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer and today I'm going to show you how to create a responsive hero component in Framer. In the last video, I made a walkthrough of how to create a responsive nav bar and so we're gonna be building off that, creating the next section in our site. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layout and I'm going to add columns. And so columns are basically two side-by-side -side sections. I can also hit Shift C on my keyboard so let's do that now and then i'm going to start at this top left here i'm going to drag this over let's have this be about 600 pixels high i'm going to change this here like so and then you can see i've got these two sections one is a darker blue and one is a lighter blue that's just to indicate that there's two frames here but i'm going to go down to gap and i'm going to change this to be 24 pixels and then i'm going to change the padding to also be 24 pixels just so we've got a little bit of spacing between all of these sections on the left i'm going to have some written content and on the right i'll just have a basic image so first let's take both of these and let's increase the radius to 16 pixels I I will go to the fill property and so image is a type of fill and so if I go over here I will go to unsplash they connect with unsplashes images so if I search the word computer you can see a bunch of results come up here for the sake of this video I'm going to use this one and then when I click you can see that image has been applied like so on the left side, I'm gonna add some text. So let's go to this text tool up here and I will say something like everything you need to know when building a Framer website. Let's change this to be a little bigger. I'll make this 32 pixels. Actually, actually even a little bit larger, which is just a 40. So I want this text to fill my container. So I'm actually going to go to frame and I'm going to add a stack here. And then I'm gonna take this frame and I am going to remove it. And then you can see the text all of a sudden gets automatically centered again stack is similar to auto layout so i'm now going to go to this width section and i'm going to have this fill the content of the container and so now it wraps perfectly and you can see it does that for desktop tablet and mobile the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add another set of text so i'm going to duplicate this and instead of it being left and right i'm going to have these stacked on top of each other and i am going to change this headline to actually say get started building websites in Framer. And then I'm gonna change this copy here to be body copy. So let's change this to regular, and then we'll change the size to 16. And then now if I zoom in a bit, I've got this headline, I've got this body copy, and it looks like I spelled website wrong. So let's change that, we'll add a period. And then I'm going to change this black to be a little bit lighter gray, just so we have a little bit of contrast between the headline and body copy. And then I'm gonna add a button here. So let's go to insert and we'll go to type button. And if I drag in this button element here, you can see this says click. I wanna change the styling of this a little bit. So let's go ahead and select the type here and we'll change this to be enter. And then we'll change the size of this to be 16 pixels as well. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this CTA to say get started. And then I want this all to align with the left. So if I go over to the layout section and I go to align and I go to left, you can see everything left aligns. And, and right now this is left aligned with the page and it's within this container, it's within this other container, but I want there to be a little bit of padding here and I want this to be kind of like a gray tile. So I'm gonna add a fill and let's have this be a bit of a light gray, like so. I'm actually gonna add a slight blue tint to this like that and then let's change the radius here to be 24 pixels i'm actually going to change this radius on the image to be 24 pixels as well so now i've got this container but i want to actually add a little bit of padding here so i'm going to add 40 pixels of padding on each side but you can see this pushes the box over and so what i'm going to do now is instead of this being fill width i'm going to have this be relative and you can see this is 52 percent if i change this to 50 percent it will be a 50 50 split so these will be the same size again then i need to add this radius here and so now i've got this card on this side and i've got this card on this side the spacing between all these elements is uniform right now and i want i want the headline 
and the body copy to be closer together and I want the button to be a little bit farther apart. So the way that I will do that is I will select these two layers here. I will add a stack and then I'm gonna change the gap to only be eight pixels. And then I'm gonna go up to this rows section and I'm gonna have the gap be 24 pixels. And then you can see the get started button is a little bit below the headline and body copy. So this is all we need to do to get this set up on desktop. But if we go over to responsive, you can see things start to look a little weird. So on tablet, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna change the height of this to be a little shorter, say 500. I'm going to reduce the padding of this to be only 24 pixels. And then I'm gonna reduce the type size here to be 28 instead of 40. And we'll keep this as 16 pixels, but then I'm gonna to need to change the width here. So let's have this be, let's try 300. That's a little bit too short. Let's set this to be 333 pixels. And so now we've got this side-by-side -side card and the sizing here is good for tablet. And then on mobile, you can see things really start to look strange. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to make sure that these components are flush with each other. The way that I'm measuring between spaces is I'm holding the option key and then hovering over another element and that little pink thing shows up. So if I hold option down, you can see it shows up. If I let go, it goes away. I like that these are vertically stacked on top of each other rather than horizontally, but I want this to be above this card. So first I'm gonna take this and I'll move it up here. So let's take this row here and I'm gonna change this to fill, which will bring it back. And then I need to change this text to be much smaller and have there be less padding. So let's change the padding to be 24 pixels again, and then let's change this type size to be 28 as well. And then we will have this whole section fill the container like so. And now you can see that I've got a stacked set of cards on mobile. They are horizontally laid out on tablet and they're also horizontally laid out on desktop. So if I hit play, I've got my site, which I can expand, if I bring it down, it'll shrink down a bit. And then if I shrink it down to mobile, it will shrink down like so. And then if I really shrink down, you can see that it starts to get weird at like 350 pixels wide, which is like the smallest phone you would ever really see. But to fix that, to fix that cropping issue, what I need to do is I need to select this layer here, which has both of the headline and the body copy, and I need to change this to fit content. And then if I go back and hit play again, I shrink this down, you'll see it'll just start to stack more and more. There aren't many phones that have a screen that's this small in size. So we should be good with breakpoint that's around, let's say 375 pixels wide. That's the sta standard size for the iPhone 11 Pro. This is looking pretty good. And the height for that is typically 812. So all of our content is fitting within the viewport. But that's it. You've now created a hero component for desktop tablet and mobile, and the design is fully responsive. To save these changes, I'm going to hit publish. And if I click update, you can see that I now have this link where if I click it, it will open this site in the web. And then if I shrink this up or down, it would be fully responsive. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of how to use Framer to create responsive design for desktop, tablet, and mobile, and that you feel like you could create your own hero module if you needed to. I'm gonna be making more Framer videos like this soon, so if you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.